Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video here today and yet another video on F1 2020. Today we're going to be talking about the camera settings. This is a video that I do every single year. You guys always ask for it in the comment section of every single video and I love making this video for you guys every single year because I feel like it helps a lot of you out and um, you know a lot of you like me don't particularly enjoy the default cameras on the game so you have to adjust them. So hopefully you find this video informative. But before we jump into the video guys, if you are new to my channel, if you could hit that subscribe button, that would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to hit 50,000 subs by the end of the year, that's my target, and I want to try and achieve that this year. And also, if you enjoy the video, drop a like, and without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So for the camera settings, in my opinion, I want to mention a few things, because at the end of the day, when it comes to these things, ultimately, it is all subjective. So you may have a different preference to me. So I want to get this out of the way. I personally am an offset T-cam user. I like the realism. So when you watch F1 in real life, you see the offset T-cam all the time. And that's what I like to use. In this video, we have three cameras. We have regular T-cam, offset, and cockpit view. So let's jump into it and let's break it down because we've got settings for every single one of these for each individual car. So hopefully there'll be something in here for every single one of you guys. So I'm going to leave the cameras in the background, guys. You guys can pause the video at any time and, you know, take, literally take a screenshot and apply the settings to your own game while I kind of talk about the cameras in the background and give my thoughts and opinions on everything because I find them quite interesting, especially this year. So um, first and foremost, me personally, like I mentioned before, I am an offset T-cam user. Um, it's been my preference ever since it's been available, I believe since F1 2012, and I always try to use it whenever I can. Recently, to be fair, in F1 2019, I use the straight T-cam more than ever. And in this video, you will see across all my camera settings, the straight T-cam is exactly the same for every single car i'm quite happy with the regular t-cam to be honest with you it could do some work but generally i've got no issue with it there is one problem with the straight regular t-cam and that is the camera movement so in my opinion besides top of view none of the cameras should move if you use regular t-cam you'll realize that when you brake and accelerate the camera kind of rocks back and forth um, I'm not a fan of that, it's not realistic, so I've removed that, so I've removed the camera shake, uh, the camera movement, and all those settings, you know, that apply to the regular T-cam, because it doesn't make sense, it's not realistic, like, when you watch F1 in real life, there is no camera movement, you know, maybe there's a little bit of shaking going on over the curbs, but even then, as a player, when you're running in T-cam, you want the least amount of distractions possible. So when it comes to the camera moving and shaking, you don't really want that, in my opinion. I think you want it to be stable, to be consistent, so that obviously you can improve as a player, especially if you race competitively. Um, I think that's a big, big advantage. Also from a T-cam as well, you do have the option of the virtual mirror this year, whether you use you know whatever camera you might want to use. Personally though, I'm only going to use the virtual mirror if I ever do racing cockpit view, which I do sometimes on my channel. Um, if not, then make sure your mirrors are set up correctly. So across all of these camera settings, guys, especially the T-cam and the offset T-cam, the mirror settings have been adjusted to each car for the correct height so that you can see in both of your mirrors to see cars around you and the rear wing and the rear wheels don't get in the way of the view. When it comes to the offset T-cam, I've tried to go as close as possible to real life. Obviously, we've not had a bunch of footage due to the, you know, the big stoppage on the calendar. And I've gone for what I think is pretty realistic and something that I think would, would be real. Obviously, you're not going to achieve absolute full realism unless you maybe have a mod. Um, I am on PC, so maybe down the line I might run mods. But to be fair, I'm going to be honest, I'm really, really happy with the settings of all my cameras, even with the in-game settings. You know, last year... We didn't have this option. I believe the, the possibility of um, doing individual cars and doing car-specific settings for each camera, that was patched in last year around the midway point. So around December, January, February, somewhere around there, um, it wasn't on the game at launch. So this is the first time we've had something like this. And it's a really helpful feature because each car has little things that change here and there. So um, for me personally, it was important to do this video and do every single setting individually. For example, the Renault uh, from Cockpit View is quite low um, you can actually not even see the front of the car like the um the steering wheel is higher than the chassis so you have to boost that camera up quite a bit uh, the same applies with the ferrari but then on the other hand the mercedes is quite high actually by default and um, if anything you might want to actually lower it a little bit so there are little nuances and little differences between each car therefore um doing this individually per car is really really helpful in my opinion and i've like I said i've gone for realism with the offset t cam that's what i always go for um you know sometimes you can go for what you think looks right but i've tried 
to keep it as realistic as possible based off of the limited onboards we've had so far from the Austrian Grand Prix this weekend and also from testing back in February. And with the cockpit view, I've kind of gone for a similar concept. So um, the offset horizontal, which is one of the settings, I've moved it to plus one, which is right at the very front, as far forward as it goes. And I've then increased the field of view because that gives a bigger sensation of speed. When I've used it, it gives me a much better, more realistic, immersive, high speed feeling compared to running both of field of view and offset horizontal on zero. I find it just feels a lot more right if you were running a car from cockpit view. And like I said, I've, I've done every single one of these cars individually tested them and I'm a big fan the one car I'm a little bit not sure about is maybe the Williams um, it's a bit zoomed in I feel like that car might get patched so I'll keep an eye out for that one and that is another thing when it comes to patches um, in the past cameras have changed or reset so the settings aren't always 100% accurate throughout the entire year so um, I might do an updated version at some point if I ever do an updated version it will always be linked in the description down below and also in the top right hand corner of the screen so always click on those annotations to see if uh, new settings do come through but generally just to put a bit of a bow tie on this video the default TCAM the straight one I've kept it exactly the same for all the cars and I've just reduced the camera movement for the offset t-cam i've gone for outright realism and for the cockpit view i've kind of zoomed it in a bit more um, also aim the camera down more towards the feet because i feel like that is also more realistic instead of looking up to the sky and then um, also focus on you know looking at the horizon making sure that you you're more focused on the apex rather than the car in itself which is really really key when driving from cockpit view Personally, I've got the halo column on. Um, when I do drive and copy, I might turn it off. But for now, I've kept it on because it affects other camera settings when you have it off. Um, so yeah, personally, I've kept it on for now. Again, just for realism purposes. And that is a big thing of why I like F1 and I try to race it in a realistic way. But that is it guys, I'm going to start wrapping up, I don't want to go on too long, um, I wanted to give a pretty complete explanation and also give the video time in terms of each camera setting so you guys have time to kind of screenshot and uh, take a picture of each one and hopefully you found it informative. I will have another video out whether it's after this or it's already gone live, I'm not sure because I am pre-recording these videos. I will have a video regarding the wheel settings for this year's game, so the settings I use for my wheel in this year's F1 2020 game, what I find works best for me and might help you guys, so do check out the video guys. If I have uploaded it, it will be linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. If I haven't, then check it out on my channel, guys. It would have been live by now. And hopefully you guys do enjoy that video and find it informative. And like I said, there will be more of these tips and tricks videos down the line. But that is it from me here today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you found the video informative, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And sub to the channel if you could, guys. Once again, like I said, I'm trying to hit 50,000 subs by the end of the year. I want to try and make this a big year for myself and to really push my channel. So I'd greatly appreciate any help on that front. And also finally, guys, check out the two videos on your screen if you have missed them regarding F1 2020 content. You might find them enjoyable, so give them a go and let me know what you think. But guys, that is it from me here today in this video, and I'll see all of you in my next one very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.